Good morning farmers, another week of uh, knowledge and education here at Fustera Poultry Farm. With you is uh, Abu Mahir, uh, the Chief Egg Officer of Fustera Poultry here in Kajiado. Another episode. So in this quick episode, we will do we will handle three components. Um, one is uh, the current updates. The second uh, we are doing uh, we did uh, the baking and we will tell you the importance of the baking in our flock. And of course, uh, the third one will be just uh, the general observation of uh, our chicken monitoring uh, their growth against uh, their age. So friend here and our vet is by the name of uh, Anthony. He runs uh, Digital Agrovet on Facebook and you can also reach him on phone. You want to say hi? Hello, hi guys. I hope you understand the meaning and the importance of vaccinating your birds. So keep in touch with the Rosella farm. Thank you, Anthony. So today we are doing a vaccination of uh, full typhoid. Uh, about uh, two months, two weeks. We did not, uh, we were supposed to vaccinate them at uh, two months exactly. But we did not do that because uh, currently our flock, uh, we were administering some uh, organic medication for coccidiasis and uh, there was also a um, breakout of Newcastle disease. So we did not want to vaccinate our birds um, with this current condition. They are late for this vaccination by two weeks, but that's okay. Bearing in mind the current situation we were going through. So right now we are administering the full typhoid vaccine. Full typhoid vaccine is uh, administered uh, through intramuscular injection. Intramuscular it means uh, it's uh, on the thighs where the muscles are or uh, the breasts, the chicken uh, breasts. So you come out of your chicken like that, you clear the feathers on the thighs, you don't pluck them and then you inject one millimeter of course. So with that, you we'll, we'll know that your birds are vaccinated against uh, fall typhoid. It's important because if you don't vaccinate uh, against, against fall typhoid, then um, this is a deadly disease. It can uh, even cause mortality in your farm and even low production in terms of uh, growth and even the egg production in future. So this full typhoid we are getting, it's uh, normally a bottle, it goes for 100 uh, doses. We got uh, enough bottles for our flock. We already uh, finished vaccinating one compartment, at the top uh, right compartment. Those are the buds which are already vaccinated. So once we vaccinate the buds, we let them out. And then um, we'll collect the buds later and capture them. Put them in the right compartment. So in here, uh, it's the home of the partridge breed. We have the dominant partridge. We also have the Colombian leghorn. In administering the full typhoid, of course, uh, I talked about the intramuscular injection. You give one ml per bud, then you release. That is the partridge uh, D300, also known as the brown leghorn. And this is the cockerel version of it. Nakamata, Unadunga, Nangalia, ML, you give one ML, you release. So we will be doing this exercise for a while now. And then after that, I will take you on the other topic of uh, the importance of doing the beaking. And also, um, we'll carry out our last exercise, which is. Um, measuring the buds to see how their weight against their age so uh, farmers um, a quick one when you're doing uh, the beaking i recently did uh, the beaking for all of my flocks uh, it's important because uh, first of all uh, the beaking will reduce uh, bullism within your flock it will also reduce the pecking of buds uh, it will also reduce uh, situation whereby buds eat your eggs 
when they start laying um, and also to some extent uh, it reduces the wastage of feeds because when the birds are eating from your feeding trough it collects uh, feeds which are being dropped or which doesn't go into the chickens uh, digestive system so it will also <coughs> reduce instances of feed wasted to some small extent so uh, we did uh, when you're do doing the beaking of course there is the two aspects there is the cutting of the beak and uh, also there is um, making sure that uh, that beak doesn't grow so you can uh, put it uh, on a small uh, hot metal rod just to make sure that the nerves uh, are killed and uh, again the beak cannot grow because when you cut without uh, kuchoma uh, this beak will grow again so we did that and uh, I'll show you shortly how we did ours this is our uh, this is our one of our chicks it's the Colombian leghorn as you can see it's debicked when you're debicking you cut the top and the bottom part and then, uh, as I said, unachoma kidogo, so that it doesn't grow back again. So normally, uh, the beak which is being cut, it's around one inch or so, or one and a half inch. When you cut it, and then you choma it, it will not grow again. So, <coughs> this is it. We'll show you the last part whereby we weigh our birds, uh, both the cockerel and the hen, and we do an average so that we know um, the feeding ratio against uh, our our chickens' uh, age, how they are doing. These are two months and uh, two weeks, so we already have a feeding schedule and uh, the weight schedule of uh, how much in cages it should be when it comes to the, uh, the feeding. A, a, a quick uh, insight when you're choosing a jogo for breeding purposes however young it is you can tell if it will be a good breeder number one you check the comb and also you check the wattles you can see the wattles here 
they are big in color and red and also the comp they are big and red so that's the characteristics of a good trait of a jogo or a cock and even the hens the bigger the wattles the better the layers and the bigger the comp the better the layers so that's something i thought you need to know until next time stay safe don't forget to subscribe to the channel click on the notification bell so that you're sure you don't miss the next episode